Ο Νόρμαν Μάνεα είναι ο γνωστότερος και σημαντικότερος εν ζωή συγγραφέας Ρουμανίας. Μιας χώρας που όπως ξέρουμε έχει μεγάλη παράδοση στη λογοτεχνία και το θέατρο. Ιωνέσκο, Σιωράν, Σελάν. Στα πέντε του χρόνια είχε μια τραυματική εμπειρία. Την εμπειρία που έζησε στο στρατόπεδο συγκέντρωσης λόγω της εβραϊκής του καταγωγής. Μετά... Στην επιστροφή του γνωρίζει το πρώτο αυταρχικό καθεστώς της ζωή του ε, σαν έφηβος και μετά βεβαίως γνωρίζει το καθεστώς Τσαουσέσκου, ζει εκεί. Είναι η χειρότερη δικτατορία στην Ευρώπη. Ε, με την εξαίρεση ίσως της Αλβανικής. Ε, αργότερα στα 50 του χρόνια αρκετά μεγάλος και ήδη με πολλά βιβλία στο ενεργητικό του ε, φεύγει από τη Ρουμανία και έρχεται στην Αμερική. Ε, όπου εγκαθίσταται εδώ στο κολέγιο Μπάρτ ένα από τα πιο αριστοκρατικά, αριστοκρατικά. κολέγια των Ηνωμένων Πολιτειών όπου ζει, εργάζεται, διδάσκει λογοτεχνία ανατολικών χωρών και ταυτόχρονα γράφει στα ρουμάνικα πάντα Ναι, είναι, είναι ένας μέτρ του υπενιγμού και του έμεσου λόγου Μιλάει για αυτό το αίσθημα της αβεβαιότητας που έχει ο άνθρωπος υποπίεση. Δεν έχουν τα βιβλία του ε, έτσι πλοκή και δράση, αλλά έχουν μια υπόγεια δύναμη, μια καυκική ατμόσφαιρα, μεταφερμένη βέβαια στα, στα σημερινά. Σαν εσωτερικές περιπέτειες ας πούμε. Ένα σχόλιο πολιτικό έμεσο διαρκές και ένα λυρισμό κάπως. Κυκλοφορούν τρία βιβλία του στην Ελλάδα. Το Υποχρεωτική Ευδαιμονία με τέσσερις νουβέλες περί γελοτοπιών που είναι τα δοκίμια και ο Μαύρος Φάκελος, ο Μαύρος Φάκελος που είναι το παλιότερο, παλιότερο βιβλίο. Ένα μυθιστόρημα. Έχει πάρει πολλά βραβεία. Ε, το τελευταίο, το πιο πρόσφατο είναι το βραβείο με DC στο γαλλικό καλύτερο ξένου μυθιστορήματος που είναι για το... Ε, για το αυτοβιογραφικό του... Η επιστροφή του Χούλιγκαν που πρόκειται να κυκλοφορήσει και στα ελληνικά. Yes. 
So, Mr. Mann, uh, we know that uh, your father was an accountant and uh, your mother a bookseller. So I presume that uh, you were born between books. Uh, we may presume so, because I was born in the, in the house of my grandfather. My mother was there, uh, so she gave birth in the house of her father and mother. He had a bookstore which uh, had uh, everything, books and journals from all over the world in Bukovina in a very little uh, place uh, because it was not even Suchava, it was a suburb uh, and uh, an independent town but very small and yet the, the stories which I, I, I heard and read about the place uh, are amazing. It was like uh, the Greek Agora. Yeah. I mean, everything was there. Debates, crazy debates, politics, literature, religion, uh, everything. So it was a very vivid uh, little place. Do you remember your first uh, readings? Not really. Uh, I don't. As I said uh, several times, uh, this period before uh, deportation is is uh, is um, white is without any pra uh, any relief any 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 uh, important uh, accentuated memory. It's only a period of happiness, and as you know, happiness is very easily forgotten. Unhappiness stays with us better, and uh, my memories start, in fact, uh, during the deportation. You were five. I was five years. It was October, uh, October forty-one. In forty-four, we were liberated by the Red Army. So I went to a Soviet school, and I learned the first class in Russian. Huh. So we came back to Romania. We were uh, repatriated, as you say, in '45, in April '45. Do you remember this uh, first uh, um, uh, return? This I remember vividly, very vividly. We were so we when the when the Soviet authorities allowed us to, to go back, and the Romanians uh, agreed. We uh, went to, with a train uh, to Yasi, mm. which was the capital of Moldavia. Um, and there we were checked by the Red Cross, because we came very damaged. I mean, a lot of people were sick. Uh, my mother was almost as a, as a, as a shadow. Uh, so it was after a long, difficult period. And we were there in Yasi in a kind, I think for three weeks, in a kind of period of uh, recovery. How you feel to start? Uh, your life with uh, with this trauma with hmm. it was it was no choice that time uh, in the camp when I saw not only what uh, oppressors can do to victims but also what victims can do to victims and this was uh, the extraordinary experience what man can do to another man. And there it was a kind of, if we can say so, Darwinistic fight. Who is stronger, who is smarter, who is more hypocritical, will survive. Uh, who can deal better with the situation will, will do it. Uh, I, of course, was a kid and I survived uh, only due to my parents. I published an article some some years ago in in Neue Zürcher Zeitung. It was a debate in Germany about the Nazi time, about uh, a writer who said that he's bored already with all this and 
I can understand him. I suggested that every country started to build its monuments of shame. So build in every country, let this be there, don't destroy them, these monuments of heroism, but also the monuments of shame, which in every country, every country, without exception, you will find them. So from this point of view, you are a a pessimist. Uh, I'm safe this way. (laughs) <laughs> I'm very safe because I don't have, I cannot have big disappointments. So I have only good news every time. <laughs> uh, but you are not a nihilist, like Sloan. No, no, I'm not really, but I, I, I like him very much. I met him, I had a lot of, uh, I also corresponded with him, and uh, I liked him very much. He is a nihilist, but he is funny. He is paradoxical, he is uh, waking up your mind. Yes, he is a nihilist, yes. Când fereastra largă cât peretele, intră lumina edenică de primăvară, păbatul din cameră contemplă de la înălțimea a zece etaje, Fără fota paradisului, clădie, firme, pietoni de pe lumea cealaltă. In paradise, one is better off than anywhere else. Ar trebui să repete și în această dimineață. Pe cealaltă parte a străzii, clădirea roșie masivă. Să văd grupuri de copii la ora de dans și gimnastică. Coloanele galbene de taxiuri blocate la intersecția dintre Broadway și Amsterdam Avenue urlă isterizate de metronomul turmentat al dimineții. Observatorul scutează însă deja cerul, pustiul, lenta cronofagie a deșertului, termitele uriașe ale norilor. Peste jumătate de oră, Se află deja la colțul străzii, în fața clădirii de 42 de etaje în care domicilia. Nici în accent stilistic, simpla geometrie a asamblării, un adăpost, atât, suprapunere de cutii locative. Bloc stalinist, moamăre. Nu. Blocurile staliniste nu atingeau asemenea înălțime. Stalinist, totuși, repete, sfidând decorul posterității. Va deveni în această dimineață cel din urmă cu 9 ani, uluit ca atunci de noutatea vieții de după moarte, 9 ani cât 9 luni în burta doldora de noutăță a aventurii care livrează acum, această dimineață nou-nouță, ca la începutul dinaintea începuturilor. Κύριε Παπαδημητρίου, είστε αντιπρόεδρος του Πανεπιστημίου Μπάρτ και είστε ένας από τους πρώτους που υποδέχθηκε τον Νόρμαν Μάνε όταν ήρθε εδώ το 86 νομίζω. Ναι, το 1989. Α, 89. Όταν ήρθε ο Νόρμαν Μάνε από μέσω τη μια μεσολάβηση του Φίλιπ Ρόθ. Οπότε εσείς στο Πανεπιστήμιο του προσφέρατε δυνατότητα να διδάξει και να διδάξει αυτά που... Στο Πανεπιστήμιο του προσφέραμε τη δυνατότητα να διδάξει και να να είναι και δημιουργικός. Γιατί φυσικά η δημιουργία κάποιου λογοτέχνη, κάποιου ανθρώπου των καλών τεχνών έρχεται μαζί με τη διδασκαλία. Και μπορεί ας πούμε όπως και ο ο Νόρμαν το κάνει, διδάσκει τη τάξη του μέσα στα δικά του τα μικιστορήματα mm. και τα κείμενα και τα δοκίμια καθώς επίσης και κάνει και σύγκριση με άλλους λογοτέχνης της σύγχρονης εποχής. Εσείς έχετε παρακολουθήσει κανένα μάθημά Έχω του? Έχω παρακολουθήσει ένα μάθημά του όταν, έχει φέρει, όταν φέρνει άλλους διακριμένους mm. λογοτέχνες όπως τον Αντώνιο Ταμπούκη mm. που έφερε από την Ιταλία mm. το προηγούμενο εξάμεινο. Mm-hmm. Έχουν βέβαια έρθει κι άλλοι όπως ο Πάμουκ 
από την Αμπιτουρκία, περισσότεροι νομπελίστες. So you have um, uh, students for uh, American and from Eastern Europe, I or had students no, from, uh, from everywhere. Uh, I had students from Greece. Mm. One. I have Americans. I have Eastern Europeans. Uh, mm. Less, less from from Asia, mm. because they are not so much interested in this topic. You know, mm. Eastern Europe, Central Europe. Um, They usually take American mm -hmm. studies. Do you feel that you have changed uh, 20 years now, of all these 20 it. years that it. you are here? Of course I changed. In, in what way? I am still the same. Yes. And I'm still the, the little boy mm -hmm. of nine years old. Otherwise I wouldn't be a writer. Yeah. But I changed. Everything lot. changes and everything stays yes, still. Something at the same. But, but, yes. but uh, you change. I changed. I mean, I some friends uh, in Romania um, considered me a very real democrat. Mm. And they joked, you don't have to go out, you don't have to go to England, you are a liberal, you don't have to stay. When I came here, I saw I'm not at all so democratic. I'm not at all so liberal. I came heavy with a lot of resentments mm -hmm. and prejudices and, and until you get rid of this step by step and you look around and you try to understand this other society, the qualities and the defects of this society and how man Can, what man can do bad to man also in a free society, not in a, in a closed society. <laughs> This is a process of thinking and from a cultural point of view, going to the Anglo-Saxon type of culture is, uh, was very different. Mm. I mean, coming from our Central Eastern European mm -hmm. uh, mentality, uh, melancholy, You mm. know, all the mm. stuff, mm. Uh, pessimism in a country which is mainly pragmatic and optimistic by nature. Yes. This is what they brought, good and bad, yes. in the same time. And simplifying, so the main thing is, is here's American genius, if you want to say, is simplification. <laughs> so sometimes it's very important, sometimes it's terrible. You have an image in, in the Hooligans Return where you think of yourself as being the one in the circus who, who is on two horses and rides on two horses, the mm -hmm, acrobat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you still feel like that? Mm, uh, yes. Less, but yes. I mean, I write in another language. Um, as somebody said, I'm uprooted but with many roots. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I am Romanian, I am Jewish, I am American. It's a proportion here. Uh, uh, when I came back from, from the camps, I wanted to be Romanian. You of know, course. internationalist, Romanian. Very soon, uh, I, I saw that the story is not a fairy tale. It's a complicated story. So I am all this together. I'm a hybrid, if you mm. want. But um, these two horses, main or three, I don't know, it's even more mm. acrobatic. <laughs> um, they are there. καιρός που δεν μπορούμε να καταλάβουμε τον εαυτό μας παρά μόνο εν σχέση με τους άλλους. Έτσι μόνο μπορούμε, προφανώς, να καταλήξουμε σε αποκαλυπτικά συμπεράσματα. Επίσης, 
Δεν θα μπορούσαμε να οραματιστούμε το μέλλον πριν μάθουμε ποιοι είμαστε, πριν ορίσουμε τις δυνατότητές μας, που σημαίνει την ιστορία όλων των δεδομένων, τα οποία συνιστούν τις πρώτες κρίσεις του επαγωγικού συλλογισμού. Αυτό που είχε προπάντων στο μυαλό του ο ενθουσιώδης εφευρέτης, ήταν ίσως ένα πορτρέτο της εποχής του, ενώ συνάμα δεν αμφέβαλε ότι πρότεινε μια σύνθεση, όπου θα μπορούσαν να αναγνωστούν οι δικοί του προσδιορισμοί. Η εξατομίκευση ή αυτό που θα απέμενε θα προέκυπτε και πάλι από τη σύγκριση με ένα πλαίσιο αναφοράς. Ο πιο δραστικός διαχωρισμός δεν θα ήταν πια παρά ένας άλλος τρόπος να εκφραστεί ο συσχετισμός με το παιχνίδι της αρχικής επεξεργασίας. Όποιος έχει την υπομονή να κοιτάξει έτσι την κάρτα των προσωπικών δεδομένων που θα πρέπει να υποβάλει, την επομένη, στην αρμόδια υπηρεσία, εύκολα θα καταλάβει ότι μετέχει θέλοντας και μη σε αυτό το άθροισμα ή σε αυτή τη σύνθεση και ότι η ζωή του, όσο μοναδική και αν του φαίνεται, κάτι σαν φευγαλαίο και εκπληκτικό μυστήριο στα δικά του μάτια, θα φανερωνόταν έστω και μόνο ως παράτερη λεπτομέρεια μέσα σε μια σειρά συλλογικών δεδομένων. America goes to a very deep crisis, a crisis of, of external power and of external prestige and internal crisis which is very deep. Yet, it is a space of debate. It's very possible that Obama will not win. I would like him to win. Ah, you think? Yeah. It's very possible that he will not win. What is interesting about your books is that you are not, um, there is not a, a denunciation of no. the system, but no. you are digging into the human soul and this, this is exactly. the difference. Exactly. I think this yeah. is what you, you should, it's easy to condemn the system, especially after the system collapsed. <laughs> When the system is still there, but, but uh, no, I think you have to to try to scrutinize and understand the, the human mechanism of, of giving in, of, uh, in fact, what is a democracy? Democracy is, is, a, is a strategy of compromise. This is democracy. Democracy is not pure. It's not necessarily morally the highest But it tries to find a compromise between different wishes, different opinions, a reasonable compromise. A compromise is not pure. From an idealistic point of view, it's not pure. It's a pragmatic approach. But the end result is better for people, for their daily life, for their way of thinking, for their freedom uh, of thinking and of choice. We may discuss a lot about the defects of democracy, and there are many, but you, you, you cannot compare them. Of course, people now in Eastern Europe, there are people who regret the old system, of course. And this is also not impossible to understand, because If we go to a very kind of tough comparison, slavery is more comfortable. You, you don't have to take any decision. The boss takes all the decision and you do your best. You work more, he gives you a bit more food. You work better, he gives you a house or so on. In a free society, in this very competitive society, you have every moment to take decision, to take your life in your own hands. It's not pleasant to be all the time in an uncertainty, in a risk. And we know now how commercial this society became, how vulgar and the pressure, the financial pressure on, on, on culture and on, every, on, on health, Uh, insurance and so on, but it's a less bad system. It's not a wonderful system, but it's less bad. What's the, the, the role of the writer uh, in today's society as you see it? 
you came from uh, this system, you talked about uh, uh, the pressure, and you live now in the another system. The role of the writer in that society, first, mm. was artificially enhanced. The writer was granted privileges and punishments higher than he deserved because the system wanted to buy in the artist and the writer because the system in a way praised culture and wanted to use it. Here we are in another system. I speak about America and not about it. Greece. So I don't enter into <laughs> your into your society. Here in this American society, you have I think today some four or five or even more Nobel laureates in literature here. You have some forty, fifty Nobel laureates in science. You have a lot of very valuable intellectuals. You'll not find one taken into television and asked, Sir, what do you think about the Iraq war? What's your opinion about what is happening? No. They are, and this is the good and bad side of, of this society, which is a popular, trivial democracy. The intellectual doesn't have a special role. He is as everybody is. And the great cultural star is a movie star. So you have here some Romanian books, Romanian mainly, except this one which is Selan uh, in Romanian but also in other languages, Actually, in German, in Selan, French. Huh? Yes, Selan yes. was Romanian. Uh, he was uh, Romanian and I, uh, I am writing an essay on him and therefore I have, I have all these books, this Gerand also here, this very interesting book about his love affair mm. with a woman, a, a German woman. I don't know if you know this story. Only Peggy Guggenheim, I know. Uh, no, <laughs> this is a story. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yes, here are also Romanian books. Romanian books here are in English. I see Dostoevsky and yes. Tolstoy. Yes, and Tolstoy. You are yes, for yeah. uh, Dostoy or for Dostoevsky? Uh, it's difficult, it's a very <laughs> difficult choice. I, I think they are complementary. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I do think they are complementary. Uh, I, I like more Tolstoy in a way, but I have one or two books by Dostoevsky which uh, are, are very much uh, my, my, my favorite. And uh, one is, is the Idiot. Here are books, uh, these are not all my books, because I have in New York others, but here are also some books which I use. But uh, we at, can at, see at, your at, loves, Kafka, uh, a lot Kafka, of Kafka. Kafka, yes, because I also teach Kafka, ah. and, and, and here are some books which I, which I also teach. Canetti, Antonio I Canetti, see. yes, Antonio is also here, and others whom I taught. Uh, 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 at Bard. Uh, Mario Vargas Llosa, he was in my class, and, and Pamuk, and uh, a lot of others. <laughs> Après vous. Merci. What are you writing here? Here is a computer, here sometimes, yeah, quite often. In fact, I, I, I do write on the computer. The lessons or the books? Uh, the books, too. The books, too? Yes, ah. now I started computing. And here is my desk where I, I work on my next book and other things. And here are some photos of, of people whom I like.
Einstein. Einstein and Ionesco. No, oh, yeah, this no. is Ionesco and Kafka. There. Do you write uh, easily? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, and the writers who don't write easily should be paid more. <laughs> 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 you know, because they spend more time. But uh, you will uh, drink? No, I will drink some water. I'm fine. Don't. Do you prepare uh, often uh, Romanian food or not? Yeah. Yes. All the professors uh, want to eat uh, Romanian food. No. They, they, they are not uh, always our guests, but they like Romanian food. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Romanian from Greece? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You are the president of Bard College and you have uh, many professors uh, who are not uh, American but who are uh, coming from uh, other countries, uh, Romanian, Greeks. Is it uh, very common in uh, American universities or it's a characteristic of uh, Bard? No, it's very common. It's not unusual uh, since the uh, 1930s. Uh, since the rise of fascism in Europe, America, which was once very much uh, isolated in terms of who taught in the universities, became an immigrant nation of intellectuals and scientists. So for those of us who went to the American university, let's say in the 60s and 70s, uh, we were taught by many, many emigres who had come in the 1940s and 50s. And Bard, which had been part of Columbia University in the 40s and in the 30s, uh, was the destination point of many emigrates already in the 1930s. But many, many American universities, it's very unusual. We also got used to taking courses from uh, teachers who didn't speak English very well. And they were translating from German or Russian or French or Italian. And uh, it was a sign of being educated. To not speak English well, but in a sophisticated way, was a sign of being very smart. The way to be smart in America is either to have an English accent, which no American can penetrate for its stupidity, or to be a foreign speaker using big words, ungrammatically. When Mr. Manea came in the United States, he was teaching as, a, I don't know the, the status, but now there is a chair. Yes. I mean, he he could have stayed without a chair. Now he, he has a well, chair. He did this very is a... well. He did very yes. well. People liked his book. There's no accounting for taste. People liked the book. He got a good critical reaction. He became well known. So his colleagues, you know, when he came, nobody knew who he was. Everybody's suspicious of a newcomer. Who is he? You know, I never heard of him. You know, so people are negative. But he was here for a while, wonderful teacher, people, and then his books were translated to English and to other languages, and he developed a reputation. And then we decided, you know, that uh, he is one of the most distinguished members of our faculty, and the way you honor a distinguished member of the faculty is you give him an endowed chair. You are the most famous Romanian writer in the world. You still are writing in Romanian? Yes. So you don't think that uh, maybe it would be now with the change, the political change, uh, would be very natural to, to live, to return in Romania? It's a difficult question to answer if I have a certain age. I was not in Romania for 20 years. I 
head to face from a distance a very very nasty things which were written about me there now the situation improved it's true my situation improved it's also true especially with a new generation of 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 writers they 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 like me they consider that I was right in every thing but still uh, I don't think I can go back hmm. and I don't think it will be a good decision despite the fact that I will feel probably immediately at home, at home relieved speaking the language it's a new country no? having the what? now it's a new country or not? Uh, it is a new old country <laughs> it's a combination of everything. It's not simple, and it will not be simple for a long time. And they need there are a lot, a lot of nasty things which are going on. At the surface, and as I, as I said in all these interviews which I gave you in Romania, because they asked me, of course, how do you think, how do you find the place? I said, look, I don't claim now that I know the daily deep reality. The surface, which I see, is better. The surface is clearly better. The wave from the airport to the center of the city is much better than it was in 97 when I was here. A lot of other things are better. It's clear, it's very clear. I know that deep down inside there are a lot, a lot of terrible things. But this is not to say that if there are some terrible things in your country, you leave the country, in every country. Yes, a lot there of are terrible, terrible things, things are in America too. In America mm -hmm. too. But yeah, it's easier for me. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not really my stuff, you know. I would be pleased, for instance, now if Obama wins. If he doesn't win, I'm not desperate. You understand? Yeah. It's, it's another detachment. When I left yes. Romania now, in May, the feeling was what? I'm not really more from this place. Mm. Now I take the plane, I know for sure that I am not from that place. I go back to my home, this nice home. It's a domicile. It's pleasant. Everything functions. It's air conditioning. Everything is fine. It's not my home. And I understood that this is what happened. And that's it. Ινστιτούτο. Ξέρεις προφανώς τι εννοώ. Το Ινστιτούτο Βάσης. Αναποτελεσματικό και εκείνο όπως όλοι οι περιεργολάβοι του. Πλήθος μέσα στη διάθεσή του, προφανώς, κι όμως γυρίζει στο κενό αγαπητέ μου Σοφέ. Στο κενό, πίστεψέ με. Για σκέψου το λιγάκι. Παραγεμίζουν ακατάπαυστα φακέλους και ντουλάπια. Αναφορές, σημειώσει με πληροφορίες, στίβες ολόκληρες. Και λοιπόν, τίποτε απολύτως. Τζίφος μωρό. Όλα αυτά που σοριάζουν και καταχωρίζουν και συμπληρώνουν ακατάπαυστα, στην πραγματικότητα δεν μπορούν να τα χρησιμοποιήσουν. Πάει πια η εποχή του Γεωργιανού με τα μεγάλα μουστάκια. Όταν ακούω τους άλλους εκεί, στην άλλη πλευρά, στον παράδεισο της κατανάλωσης, να απαγγέλουν τα σλόγγαν τους για την ουτοπία και το φόβο, ποια ουτοπία, ούτε λόγος πια γι' αυτή. Σαν εκείνοι με τον πραγματισμό τους να είχαν βρει τη λύση. Μόνο μια ματιά να τους ρίξεις, θα δεις τι είναι η απουσία της ουτοπίας. Και σε μας να κοιτάξεις, θα δεις τι είναι η απουσία των πάντων συμπεριλαμβανωμένης της ουτοπίας. Αλλά δεν συλλαμβάνουν πια χιλιάδες ανθρώπους μέσα στη νύχτα, μολονότι το υλικό, 
Το πρόσχημα ετοιμάζεται συνεχώς, μολονότι η μηχανή είναι εκεί, μολονότι ο τρεχός γυρίζει, προφανώς στο κενό. Ντουλάπια, γραφεία ολόκληρα, φάκελοι, φάκελοι και πάλι φάκελοι που δεν χρησιμοποιούνται ποτέ και σε αυτού συμβαίνει το ίδιο. Ελάχιστη αποδοτικότητα, πίστεψέ με, ελάχιστη αποδοτικότητα μωρό. conosciuto il suo amico Norman Mann. L'ho conosciuto prima attraverso i libri eh, tradotti in italiano. Norman è tradotto completamente in italiano e è stato tradotto già molti anni fa. Il primo libro che io ho letto è, <coughs> era stato pubblicato dalla Feltrinelli e si chiamava Felicità Obbligatoria. E dunque questo libro mi ha toccato molto, naturalmente, è un libro sull'universo kafkiano del periodo di Ceaucesco. Allora sono andato alla ricerca degli altri suoi libri, ma non lo conoscevo personalmente, poi un giorno mi ha invitato a fare de- delle lezioni al Bar College di New York e sono andato e ero un po' intimidito a conoscerlo perché attraverso la sua letteratura avevo capito la sua vita e la difficoltà della sua vita e questo mi intimidiva molto e appena ci siamo conosciuti è nata una grande simpatia e e poi è venuta immediatamente l'amicizia credo che abbiamo subito sentito delle affinità di pensiero e di sensibilità nei confronti del mondo e, e questo forse si era già capito nei libri, leggendo i nostri libri reciprocamente, ma lo hanno confermato anche la conoscenza personale, poi siamo da, diventati grandi amici. The main Romanian literary magazine which is a democratic magazine, so it's not, uh, it was published an article by a critic who knows my work and always wrote very well about me, about my visit to Romania and what I represent. So it was a very good analysis of my work and he said in the end he left as a Romanian writer and he came back as a Jewish writer. You think uh, that you got in exile here in the United States? If I am or if I was? You are. <laughs> Look, first of all, usually you consider exile when you are out of your country and cannot go back, mainly. When Ovid was expelled from Rome to the Black Sea, He couldn't go back because the emperor didn't allow him to, to go back. So when I left, I couldn't go back. 
I could have gone back, but stay there forever, and I didn't know what would have happened. So now it's not the same situation. I can go back. I don't go more back. So what is exactly my situation? From a legal point of view, it changed because I can go back. And I have, I, I kept the Romanian citizenship and I have the American citizenship. So I can go, I can live there, I can live for six months or more or stay, or, I don't know. Maybe we should try to find another term. Uh, the feeling is of an exile. It's not so uh, tough as it was at the beginning when you, you came here without language, without any concrete social frame. I was not a dentist. I was a failed engineer. I didn't want to go back to my, my engineering at all. So what can an, an Romanian uh, writer do in this big America? Very little. But as I said, the country was, uh, in the end, if I, I judge, I think it was better than if I would have remained in, in France maybe even uh, than Germany. Uh, so it was good for me. It was good for me. Uh, I found in the end uh, a refuge, a place. I got to know a totally different world. It was, uh, I think, as traumatic as it was. It was an essential and privileged experience to go to exile. Το κύμα εθνικισμού που σαρώνει τον κόσμο, οι απειλητικέ συγκρούσει μειονοτήτων στι ανατολικοευρωπαϊκέ χώρε και η άνοδο τη ξενοφοβία στη Δυτική Ευρώπη είναι φαινόμενα τα οποία ξαναφέρνουν στο κέντρο τη προσοχή μα μία από τι μείζονε αντιφάσει του καιρού μα. Ο Μπέρτολ Μπρέχτ θεωρούσε την εξορία ω την καλύτερη σχολή διαλεκτική. Πράγματι, ο εξόριστο, ο πρόσφυγα καθίσταται ξένο συνεπία κάποια αλλαγή. Εκ του γεγονότος της υπάρξεώς του, ο ξένος αναγκάζεται να διαλογίζεται μονίμως επί του θέματος της αλλαγής. Στο Βερολίνο, την πρώτη μου χρονιά στη Δυτική Ευρώπη, ζήγησα και ξαναζήγησα καθημερινά το ζήτημα της αποξένωσης. Με απασχολούσε όχι μόνο η εγχώρια εξορία, από την οποία μόλις είχα αποδράσει, αλλά και η γενικότερη ιδέα της εξορίας. Ένιωθα ότι για μία ακόμα φορά η ιστορία με είχε ταπεινώσει εξαναγκάζοντάς με σε αυτή την ανεπιθύμητη περιπέτεια. Καθ' όλη τη μεταπολεμική περίοδο, μέσα από αναγνώσεις και από τη γραφή, δοκίμαζα τις εσωτερικές αντοχές μου σε αβάστακτες εξωτερικές πιέσεις. Εάν με ρωτήσεις τι ε, μου έκανε περισσότερο εντύπωση από το Μάνε, θα έλεγα ότι ήταν αυτή η αφοπλιστική του ηλικρίνεια μπροστά στο φακό. Ε, σαν να ξεγυμνώθηκε χωρίς να έχει κανένα κράτημα του ανθρώπου με κάποιο στάτους, με ένα όνομα, με Ού, μια... Βέβαια. Και νομίζω ότι αυτό που ιδιαίτερα με συγκίνησε ήταν το πόσο άνετα, το πόσο εύκολα, το πόσο απλά ο ίδιος αφηγήθηκε, έδειξε μπροστά στο φακό τις δικές του τις αντιφάσεις. Ε. Τις αντιφάσεις ενός Ευρωπαίου συγγραφέα ο οποίο ζει εδώ και πολλά χρόνια στην Αμερική. Ο οποίο γράφει στη γλώσσα του, ο οποίο αγαπάει την καινούργια του πατρίδα, αλλά δεν ταυτίζεται με αυτή. Ναι. Δεν έχει εξαμερικανιστεί, Όχι. αλλά και πάλι δεν θέλει να γυρίσει εκεί. Και είναι καταπληκτικό πώ σιγά σιγά σου το δίνει να, να το καταλάβει αυτό. Εμένα μου άρεσε και το χιούμορ του και αυτό ο σαρκασμό ναι. του που έχει. Ξέρετε. Πάντοτε κάπω σε τσεκάρει με ένα αστείο και μετά ανοίγεται και προχωράει. Ναι, αυτό σε κάνει να το λες κι εσύ. Και αυτό είναι ένα πράγμα που το έχουν μονάχα οι σπουδαίοι ναι. ε, λογοτέχνε. Ναι, μπορεί να πάρει απόσταση από τον εαυτό του. Ακριβώ. Ναι. Να μην τρέφεται τόσο πολύ από το εγώ του. Ακριβώς. Αυτό είναι σπουδαίο πράγμα. Και είχε αυτό το. 
υποβλητικό, δηλαδή σε έκανε να τον προσέξεις και να τον ακούσεις και να τον, να τον νιώσεις πριν τον καταλάβεις. Mm.